All right. Well, who enjoyed the show last weekend? Wasn't that, wasn't that awesome? So you, you do know who Santa's favorite singer is, right? Elfis. All right, turn in your Bibles. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. We're continuing on our Christmas is Good News series. And as we think about history, one of the unique perspectives we have as the people of God, as Christians, is that history is not just going in circles or it's not as Shakespeare said in Macbeth that it's just full of sound and fury but signifying nothing. We understand that history is moving towards a pinnacle and that there's actually a central figure in all of history and that person is Jesus the Christ and that the climax of history will be when he comes and returns to bring his kingdom on to earth. And one of the amazing things about history and people say that history is actually his story is that so much of what Jesus would do on earth, and even his birth was foretold in prophecies hundreds of years before he ever walked on this planet. And that is one of the reasons that we have such great evidence that this isn't just a fairy tale, but that Jesus is who he actually says he was. And so today as we open the book of Micah that was written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus, we see these predictions of what Jesus the Messiah would live out. But we also see how the kingdom of God works because you see there are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of this world, but then there is the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus actually taught us to pray. Pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So listen to this powerful prophetic word, and then I want to pull out four truths from it. It says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son. And the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Let me give you four words today. I encourage you to write them down. We're going to go deep in a study of this prophetic word today. Those words are small, son, shepherd, and nations. Small, Son, shepherd, and nations. Let's begin with the topic of small. Several weeks ago, I'm flying back from Dubai in the U United Arab Emirates. It is the mother of all flights, 16 and a half hours on one plane. You have to have a strategy to diversify your time or you will go insane. And so I'd broken up my time into several components. One, I was getting on in the morning, so I was going to have my devotional time, my FaceTime, reading the Word, and then praying. Then I had a great fiction book to spend hours in. And then I set aside some time to watch two movies. Now, some people watch movies the whole time, but if you watch movies straight for 16 hours, your mind will turn to putty. So... But I did, I was excited to find the Captain America movies on there. And so I started watching Captain America, and I'd never seen it before. And just a few minutes in, I went, no way. You guys are thieves. You took a biblical theme, and that's why people love this so much. Here's the theme, small. I want you to take the, uh, a look at Steve Rogers, the, the main character of Captain America. This, my friends is Captain America. Here's the story. Steve Rogers' his parents have been killed by the Nazis, and it's the time of World War II. America is in the middle of that epic war and not winning, and so Steve wants to join the armed forces. He keeps going to sign up for the army, but Time and time again, he is denied because he's too small. His body's too frail. He's been plagued with sickness. And so again and again and again, he is rejected. Now, the amazing thing is this scientist observes him and invites him in to be a, a part of this experimental 
group. And in this experimental group, that see, the scientist has come up with this serum that will transform someone into the ultimate soldier fighting machine. And so the captain has picked all these strong, buff guys, and the scientist has picked this one small guy. Why? Because he has observed Steve's heart. And he says, when this serum is administered, whatever is inside will be amplified. And so the climactic moment is when a a grenade is thrown into the platoon and someone yells grenade. And as everyone else dives away, Steve dives on it to shield the rest of his platoon, giving his life so that others might live. The grenade is a fake and the scientist goes, there's our man. He saw what was inside. You know, so often as Americans, we love big. We want a bigger bank account. We want a bigger home. We want a big name. We want a a big job. But do you know?